So it's been pretty rainy the last few months in Perth and we haven't had to use the retic system. But now we're getting into summer, the lawn's definitely looking dry and it could use some regular watering. So the other day when I went to turn it on, nothing happened. And I thought I'd do a little video on how I diagnosed the faults that I found and what I did to fix them. Now, we bought this property established and it already had a retic system installed, so I don't actually know too much about this, but here's what I can show you. The brand is Rainmaster and it's a nine zone system. So this is basically how it's wired. It's got a 24 volt AC input. It has a common and also a master solenoid. Then it has nine channels. So a wire for each solenoid that goes to each zone. So if you take a multimeter, you can measure across the input and confirm that your input power supply is okay. In this case, it's reading a little bit higher than 24 volts AC, but that's fine. So now if I put the negative probe on the common and put the positive probe on the master terminal, we can measure 27 volts AC, the power supply input voltage, anytime we turn one of the zones on. This can also be repeated to test individual zones. So for example, I put it onto channel one. When I turn zone one on, the master will turn on and also the solenoid for zone one will be activated. So this confirms for me that the controller is doing what it's supposed to and it's sending that 27 volts AC down the cabling towards the master solenoid. Because my retic system has a master solenoid, it's more than likely located near the water supply for your property. But just for reference, this is one of the zone solenoids and it's got this little protector case around it with a little cap that you can take off. Here we go, this is the main water supply to the house and it's got a little tap next to the meter where you can turn off the water supply. So make sure you do that before you pull anything apart. By removing that green cover, I've exposed the solenoid. You can see that I've rotated the solenoid and that's just simulating what would happen if the solenoid was electrically activated. You might even be able to notice that the water meter is wheeling out of control. That's just water filling up the zones again. The solenoid sits on top of a valve which lets water in through to the main feed for all the stations. And then each individual station has its own solenoid and that is activated at the same time if you select that zone. By this point I'd kind of figured that I would probably have to replace the solenoid and quite possibly the valve that was sitting underneath that solenoid so I decided to dig away and expose all the stuff in that area. And lucky I did, look at the state of the shutoff valve. Then I just poured sort of half a bucket of soapy water um, just to loosen up some of the dirt and hopefully be able to read the labels clearer. Now that everything's more accessible and easier to work on, I used an adjustable spanner just to loosen that back retic connector. I had to apply quite a bit of force to loosen the valve from the brass shutoff valve. Then I unscrewed the solenoid from the top and that just made it easier to rotate that plastic valve. So it was actually pretty difficult to get that off but definitely worth it. At this point I'll just say that you know, if the solenoid was faulty I probably could have got away with just replacing that solenoid but if you look at the condition of the overall equipment in that area it's probably best that I change everything. So now we had all the parts out, it was a quick trip in the car down to the local retic shop and $35 later we had all of these parts. So as well as the replacement valve with the solenoid on top, I've also got some gel filled connectors and I'll show you how to put those on. Because this master valve is going to be under pressure from the mains water at all times, I'm making sure to put some decent plumber's tape onto the threads to help them seal up. This was a pretty tight spot to work in, but eventually I was able to get the valve screwed into both ends. Once I'd done that, I was able to screw the solenoid on top, and then we can go ahead and do a test. Shit. And the leak test pretty much bombed and failed straight away, so turns out that brass shutoff valve, I probably should have replaced that from the start. Here's actually where I broke it. And 
and that's me putting my foot through a bucket. Oh well, that's just how jobs go sometimes. So I was able to put my phone in there and take a photo of that shutoff valve and I bought a replacement for that for I think $7.15 from Bunnings, so not too expensive. I used a combination of good old WD-40 and some adjustable vice grips to get the old shutoff valve off. Then a little bit of a clean, lots more thread tape and a whole lot of twisting and turning and the new valve was installed. Finally with the solenoid screwed in, it's now time for the second waterproof test. And it was good, pretty happy with that. On to the wiring, the person that sold me the new retic valve also gave me some of these gel filled compression connectors and basically you've got to trim your cabling off to the right length, push them right the way in and then you can use a pair of pliers just to compress that connector and what it'll do is pierce the insulation and make a join between those two cables and then the gel will actually help protect and waterproof that connection. Pretty cool stuff. So with all that completed, I could finally fill that hole back in, put that nice little shroud that goes over the valve back on and put the cover plate back on. Let's go test it and see if it works. Nice one, should be back to green lawns in no time. Oh, and here's that damaged shutoff valve. Hopefully you can see the little crack where the water was spraying out. So thanks for watching the video guys. I hope you picked up something, maybe some tips to help you sort out your own routine at home. That was a pretty good example of how a very small job can go kind of wrong and get a little bit out of hand, but hey, we got there in the end. So yeah, hopefully you're looking forward to the next videos. I'll see you again soon.